hello guys kwa poa uh, pia mimi ni kwa poa and uh, it's been a while since tupatane so how are you doing hope mko fine and uh, hope mnasoma bado uh, time ina songa and i hope by the time exam in afrika we will be have uh, tackled what you have to tackle so for today it's a uh, audit and assurance class so have your notebook uh, audit and assurance have your notebook and a pen and let's start with the topic from where we stopped last time and i know last time we stopped uh, i told you to write uh, some topic rights of auditors rights of auditors into bracket section 162 into bracket section 162 so if you are ready we can start our lesson and let's proceed so right number one. The auditor has a right to access all at all times the accounting records of the company. Number 2. Auditor has right to receive notice of general meetings attend and speak during the general meetings. Right number 3. Right to require from officers and employees of the company any information and explanation deemed necessary for the purposes of the audit four right to require that subsidiaries and the auditors provide such information and explanations as deemed necessary for the audit of the holding companies right five right to remunerations that is right to salary six right to legal and technical advices six right to send representations to shareholders in case there are attempts by the directors to dismiss him duties of the auditor subtopic duties of the auditor so number one, to report to shareholders on the financial statements read before the company at the annual general meeting whether in his opinion the balance sheet gives a true and fair view of the company's financial position at the balance sheet date comma the profit and loss accounts gives a true and fair view as to the financial performance of the company and whether the financial statements comply with the requirements of the relevant financial reporting frameworks duty number 2 to state in the in his audit report whether he received all the information and the explanations in his opinion were necessary for the audit comma whether proper books of accounts have been kept comma whether the accounts are in line with the underlying records and whether he received adequate returns from branches of the company not visited Duty number three, to assist investigators in the company's affair by providing his working papers, comma, which are some summaries of significant matters the auditor identified during the audit. Four, to certify the profit and loss account and balance sheet in a prospectus and other statutory reports regarding members regarding numbers and shares sold by the company at cash received in respect to allotment of shares number 5 duty number 5 to include in his report any requirement required information about the director's remuneration which has been omitted from the financial statements 6 to consider if any information in director's report is inconsistent with the financial with the financial 
with the financial sorry with the financial status so subtopic client acceptance procedures how do clients accept uh, to appoint an auditor client acceptance procedure accepting another subtopic accepting appointments as company auditor how do an auditor accept to be yes appointed as an auditor of a company upon receipt of a request to accept an appointment as the auditor of a company the auditor should one ensure that he is professionally legally and ethically qualified to act as an auditor of that client two he must ensure that he is not a servant or in partnership with a servant of the company and neither must he have any personal family or business relationship with the prospective client three establish whether his firm has the technical proficiency to undertake the audit for seek, seek reference about the status of the company and its management so as to assess the potential risks in associating with the prospective client five communicate with the present auditor then a subtopic after accepting the appointment what should the auditor do the auditor should ensure that the removal or resignation of the existing auditor is properly carried out in accordance with the company's act two the auditor should obtain a, com a copy of the new resolution passed at the annual general meeting to appoint him as the auditor three the auditor should set up a letter of engagement for the new client company. A small explanation for <clears throat> a member invited to undertake professional work additional to that already being carried out by another auditor who will still continue with his existing duties should as a matter of professional courtesy notify the other auditor of the work he is undertaking this notification need to be given if the client advance a valid reason against the state the letter of engagement the letter of engagement this is a letter sent by the auditor to the client it is in the interest of both the client and the auditor that the auditor sets an engagement letter preferably before commencement of the engagement. The letter of engagement has the following purposes. One, helps avoid a misunderstanding in respect to the engagement. Two, documents the auditor's acceptance of the appointment. The three, confirms in writing any verbal arrangements between the client and the auditor. Four, provides the auditor with a medium through which he can clarify the client and his respective responsibility. Four, the letter informs the client of other services that the auditor's firm can provide, e.g. taxation or consultancy. Six, minimizes auditor's liability to that party. Principles contents, principal contents of an engagement letter. Some heading, principal contents of an engagement letter. One, the objective of the audit of the financial statements. Two, management's responsibility regarding the financial statements. Three, the scope of the audit including references to applicable registration or procurements of the professional bodies to which the auditor comprise. Four, the fact that because of the test nature of auditing and other inherent limitations of an audit, together with inherent limitations of internal control system, there is an unavoidable risk that some materials misstatements may remain undiscovered. Five, 
the expectation of unrestricted access to whoever records, to whatever records and documentation. Other matters include the included in engagement letters are one expectation of receiving from management written confirmation concerning the presentation made by the auditor in connection with the audit. We shall start tomorrow. Audit of components. Audit of components. Thank you very much. Still study, study hard, and I know you shall pass. Thank you, thank you very much.